you want to? <laughs> <laughs> Good. I'm glad we have that. I'm glad we're professional because there's a lot going on right now. And, you know, I try to I try to stay up on what's happening. And I, I know enough about Disney. I'm not a Disney fanatic, but I know enough. I know how to uh, finagle my way through parks properly. I do my planning when I go to Disney World. I, I have a good time doing my planning, going to Disney World. I try to stay up on what Disney is doing in terms of content. And I also, I like to dip my toe into the into the disney communities and 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 find out you know how they're feeling because they're they're they've got a lot of thoughts on everything that disney does and i love that coming from a world of of, of wrestling where wrestling fans are the exact same way but i see this news break on sunday night which is always the best time for corporate espionage or whatever this is that the CEO of Disney, Bob Chapek, has been booted. He's no longer the CEO of Disney. The returning CEO, Bob Iger, is coming in. He's getting right back in as of this week. People are talking about this like this is Steve Jobs returning to Apple in 1997. It's a big deal. And I wanted to wrap my head around why this is such a big deal. So I was introduced to maybe the most enthusiastic Disney fan <laughs> that I could find uh, on YouTube because that's what that's what I found so fascinating. It's one thing to look at this. You know, I saw all the business analysts talking about, you know, Bob Chapek and Bob Iger and what this means for this branch of the company and that branch and this content and that and stock prices going up and this and that. But then I saw Disney fans, just Disney fans that have like, Disney Legos behind them and like, you know, just 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 people who just live and die for this brand cheering in the streets that Bob Iger is back. So I wanted to get I, I wanted to get that perspective on it. And Disney Dan, if you are not the most enthusiastic Disney fan <laughs> that I could find, uh, I don't know who is. Uh, so first, welcome and thank you for for chatting with me a little. Thank bit. you. It's all Sam. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, tell me. I'm assuming, unless you're the one, right? I just picked wrong. You're the one Disney fan that's like, no, I'm a Chapek guy. I've been a Chapek guy from day yeah, one. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been in Chapek's corner the entire time. Yeah, me and me and I call him Bobby Chapstick. We go we go way back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Fast Pass was great, but Lightning Lane. That's my Lightning thing. Lane is I where it really it. took off, right? <laughs> so, yeah. So why 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 Disney Dan are well, fans so excited not just about the return of bob Iger, but i feel like there is some glee and i'm sure it's not personal in the demise of of bob chapik it range. certainly feels personal doesn't it, it? Personal. like you said it there are personal. people dancing in the streets it's like we <laughs> tore down saddam hussein's statue you know what i mean it's like <laughs> it's like holy yeah. smokes guys it's just uh, it's just our corporate overlord it's nothing to get too excited about right right it's not it's the the energy is not meet the old boss same as the new boss. It's like right, yeah, new right. boss. So I mean, what is it? Why why are you all so excited about uh, about Bob Iger well, coming? You back? know, uh, Papa Chapek, he came in at the wrong time. You know, it was a little bit of he, a little bit of scapegoat CEOing. If you if you want to be honest, he's the businessman. You know, he he's like the brother in Breaking Bad. He's just all business. And then he finds that clue on the toilet and the end of that cliffhanger. You know what I mean? He's 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 that kind of well. Well, Bob Iger, he's got he's like George Clooney, you know. He's smooth. He's got a great head of hair. He's <laughs> aging well. He looks great in like a polo, you know. So you were all like unabashedly just charmed by Bob Iger, like he's just a. Charming... Oh yeah, people definitely were. I mean, like the the rumors that he's running for president, like don't go unfounded. You know what I mean? That man can kiss a baby. Yeah. Well, would you vote? Do you think? I mean, without knowing any policy, probably vote for Bob Iger for president. I mean, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think so. I think I can get behind that. <laughs> so, I mean, are you as a fan? Are you like when you read the news? Are you going, "Oh my God, my prayers have been answered. This is great news." When I read the news, first I had to sit down. I was faint. It was a Sunday <laughs> night, sure. uh, you know, in November. Sure. Th stuff like this just doesn't happen, right. you know? And so it's like some real corporate espionage stuff. So after I fainted, I was like, huh? And, and someone had to get a fan. They fanned me. 
Someone broke one of those things that stink, <laughs> yeah. but I, no yeah, one's yeah, ever done smelling that Smelling salts? I, like a, I, has anyone ever smelling salted you? Not me personally, but like I saw, I once saw, I had a family member in a tattoo parlor that had to be smelling salted back to life because they couldn't, they couldn't withstand the pain. And Did that's, it work? Yeah, they came back to life. Yeah, they were fine. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Chapek came in, pandemic, uh, Disney Plus, like theme parks closed like the game was the game was like stacked against him really to be like you know some kind of visionary or anything like that he was in survival mode just cutting everything because we got to make sure that our stocks look good quarter after quarter so like you know he just he was just he was just like the heat miser he's just like the grinch Mm -hmm. he just shows up he's like all right i'm cutting jobs you know because we got to keep in the black you know and that's that's what he was and uh Disney has those CEOs. They come and go, you know, and and between them are usually like the idea guys you know, that we all remember and love. Yeah, Disney is a very unique company because people expect the CEO to love the magic of Disney. Like it's it's this weird for some reason, like it's yes. the one company still that the fans completely buy in to that same right. thing. Well, the CEO what, of Disney is like, like the Pope. The Pope. You know, you know, like, like all, all of Catholic, Catholic, all Catholics, when, when the Pope, Pope you know, whenever the Pope, the Pope says, people are like, ah, you know, that, that sound, sound they make in the, in the, in the, in the Vatican, Vatican they're like, ah, you can hear yeah, it. I can hear it. Yeah. Uh, you know, that is the similar sound we make for Bob Iger when he shows up places. We're like, ah, people are, you know, waving hands and he's like, blessings, blessings, be seated. You know, and then we all do, we all sit down. Right. Like, what, what do you want to do? What do you want to tell us, Papa Iger? But then Chapman comes out and people are like, you raise it price and you're cutting jobs and you know and the parks are full and it makes me angry and so he was a good he i think he was a good punching bag quite well honestly. look i mean it was there was something very lame about it like i i i i was at disney i go to like the disney world proper every i don't know five years or so and the last time I went, it was still one of those like all-inclusive deals. A Disney magical bus comes and gets you from the airport. Right. All your meals are included. Like you have to pay an arm and a leg, but you pay before you go. It's like a cruise. For sure. So once you right. get there, you're not thinking about it anymore. Whereas I went over the summer and I felt like somebody was grabbing me by my ankles and just trying to shake whatever last nickel I brought with me out of yeah. me while I was there. I knew it was a different deal. When I get to the airport in Orlando and it's the same door, it's the same area that the old Disney Magic Express used to pick you up. But instead, it's a guy with a van that the AC doesn't work very well in. And my wife is like, do you have car seats for our kids? And he's like, no. Do you want to <laughs> know? And she's like, what What yeah. happened? What? What happened here? Right. Yeah, it's uh, it's that revenge travel from COVID. I mean, like we really, you know, the parks are. I, I wasn't, wasn't joking, joking when I said that Iger, the CEO of Disney, is like the Pope because Disney is a bit like a religion, and you have to treat right. it that way. You right, know, you and it to, sounds, you it to sounds like it sounds like based on what you're saying that that, and you see this with companies, right? But it's usually a mistake depending on what brought the company to the dance. That like, there are companies that you can just focus on keeping profitable, keeping shareholders happy. But Disney is one of those companies where if you don't keep your fans happy, the shareholders are going to find out. Like the the, the fans, you guys have dedicated too much of your life for somebody to come and mess around with this and turn this into any other company. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Disney's commercialized nostalgia, you know, like like we, they own our memories. Like they, they, it's it's crazy, but think about it. Think yes. about the movies you grew up with. Think about the vacations you went on. Think about the toys you bought, the Happy Meals you got. Think, think about, about it. Just think about it. it. Like Disney, Disney has, has a serious ownership over a big. It's, it's kind of creepy. creepy. Yeah. That like this big company. I mean, has brought you know is responsible for so much joy, and then what happens when some guy we don't like is in charge of it? <laughs> Steals that joy from us. Yeah. No. It and it is creepy is the right word. Because you're entrusting somebody with a lot. Like, Disney's one of those last companies left that people will entrust their nostalgia. Like you said, like, their memory. You're entrusting, like, you don't... 
I don't want to trust most yep. companies to store my passwords, let alone my cherished childhood right. memories. And you're you're yeah. entrusting that to Disney, but it's odd to me. And and tell me why you think Bob Chapek wouldn't have known that going in. It's not like this is a guy that they found off the street and just put in charge of Disney. This is a guy who's been with Disney since 1993 who was running the parks before he was running the whole company, who came in right under Bob Iger, who was who was working at the beginning with Bob Iger. Why wouldn't like 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 why yeah, well, would he was, his... he was positioned in a really good way when Galaxy's Edge opened cuz Bob Chapik was overseeing the parks during the construction the opening of Galaxy's Edge. And so when he's the CEO of the parks they open these two Star Wars lands, mm -hmm. and the parks suddenly make 14% more than they've ever made before. That's a huge jump in a very short time. So it made Bobby Chaps look good on paper. You know, people are like, oh, he's he knows how to work the numbers. He made this place profitable. And um, so he rocketed right up. You know, like the, the pandemic happened. And like everything was kind of chugging along, and Iger was like, "Peace, y'all." Yeah, and, and and Bob just jumped, jumped up, up in, in there because, because he he, he had, had that, that he had that such a great momentum behind him, fourteen percent increase. But realistically, the reason that that went up so high was because Star Wars Land showed up, and everybody loved it so much because, like you said, Disney's like, "Well, we don't own everybody's memories because some people's memories are attached to Star right. Wars." So we should probably acquire Star Wars and grab those right. memories too. You got it. Which yep. that would have been a Bob Iger call to acquire Star Wars, right? Yep, I believe so. So then technically the park's going up 14% probably because the Star Wars Right. Yeah, it is attractions it is rich, it's came. rich man trickle down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. So it's not yeah. So so okay, and so from what I read was that apparently, and of course, there's all these articles coming out and all these rumors coming out, and this is just, it's another one of those stories, which is why I'm doing this video, because I love these stories so much, but it's another one of those stories that's just gonna make multiple incredible movies, incredible miniseries. It's gonna be the best, of it, you know, meetings. Oh my God, I can't wait. Uh, you know, under, Who do you, you know, think's gonna play Bob Chapik? Vin Diesel? <laughs> it's got to be, Like right? an old Vin Diesel? He'll be he'll be at the right age by the time we're ready for a miniseries about this. I think so. Or, uh... The perfect or, age. What's his name from, uh... From The Shield? Uh... You know, he played The Thing? Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or we're also just sleeping on the guy who played the brother in Breaking Bad. Of course. Of course. Like, I, like, I mean, they like look exactly the same. Joke so, I made so, yeah, right yeah, here yeah. on this very podcast. 100%. 100%. <laughs> but... But... <laughs> But so, so from what I read, though, okay, so uh, the pandemic comes, right? And and Bob Chapik, I think I've been calling him Chapik. You've been calling him Chapik. I'm going to go with you. Has uh, oh no, I call him that ironically. I love that Bobby Chapstick. Bobby I think it's Chap probably. I think it's. I think it's. I think it's Bob Chapik. Ch well, we'll call him Chapik. So Chappie shows up. Chappie, I love Chappie. Chappie, Chappie gets the gig a month before COVID. And yeah. uh, obviously, you know, as much as Disney is a beast with content, a lot of their income comes in the attractions, mainly the theme parks that yeah. they've and merchandising and too. merchandising, sure, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I read an article that said uh, Bob Iger uh, was reached out to as somebody was doing this article at the as the pandemic was just kicking in. Like, what's going to happen? There's a new CEO there, and Bob Iger had emailed the reporter back, and he said. Don't worry, I'm going to still be a part of this thing. I'm not just going to throw this guy to the wolves. I will be there to help run the company. Mm -hmm. And apparently Chappy Chapstick got furious by the fact that Iger said this. And this was, you know, one of the things that really led to the disintegration of their relationship that he goes, what do right. you mean? I don't need your help. I'm the guy yeah. in charge now. I think let a lot of that ego take control a tale of two bobs yeah and so now on one end you're like well you got to understand it was the pandemic he might have been a scapegoat if what that article is saying is true and that Iger was like i'll be there to help him out and that chapik was like i don't need your help yeah peace bro well, no you can leave the yeah, doors he, over there i mean he did it to himself he doesn't need now you don't right. even get that out like you don't you don't well i mean imagine if that pope that retired to go to like pope Pope retirement, right? Which was like a new thing. If he was like, "Uh, I'm gonna keep an eye on things," still, you know, new Pope would be like, "Hey, 
I'm the sacred channel to God, not you, bro. Right. You know, so I guess, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, and, and Bobby, Bobby Chaps, Chappie seems a little territorial. He you know seems what I mean? territorial. He seems mean. You know, you look at his face. He seems yeah. mean. He seems mean. I don't know what his sign is, but I'm sure it's a stubborn one. <laughs> yeah, he can't. He doesn't seem like the most agreeable. <laughs> but you're not wrong either. From if we're, okay, if we're playing devil's advocate from his perspective, it would be kind of like when they put the world title on the Macho Man, and they were like, right. "You're the you're the guy now," but Hulk Hogan you're is still going to be on every show. And it's right. like, well, how can I be the guy if Hogan right. won't leave? And so Chappie's right. over there going like, "Iger, will you just let me have a moment?" And maybe Iger realized, I mean, okay, but you don't know what you're doing. And, right. And he was, yeah, yeah, and he was yeah. apparently uh, right. You know, I mean, because oh, I guess, right. yeah, it's been bad. It's been real bad because now do you, is your expertise uh, strictly in the parks or do you also pay a lot of attention to what Disney's doing with their streaming and their and their content? Oh yeah, I'm a general Disney Dan. I okay. mean, I make fun of the parks professionally. <laughs> you know, I'm a theme park comedian, yeah. so that's what I do. <laughs> but you know, I'm happy to look at all things, all Disney things. It's been silly. It's like, wait, you mean to tell me that we got six half baked noodly Marvel series, and that's bankrupting the company because now Disney Plus is unprofitable? Right. Like. Uh, no, that exchange of goods did not seem worth it to me, you know? No, no, especially also when he was like, hey, you know that extremely profitable thing, uh, Pixar? You know, <laughs> the thing that yeah, revolutionized... Yeah, we're going to just keep that on Disney+. Plus. Yeah. We're going to devalue that brand excessively. Yeah, didn't he say, too? Like, didn't he say, not only are we going to keep it on Disney+, Plus, but going for... I mean, that's just... Only people that watch cartoons are kids anyway. And, like... yeah. Literally, the yeah. entire adult fan base of Disney is like, that's an extremely offensive thing that bullies have been telling us all our lives. Why would you say like that? It almost feels like he was written, right? Like he was a character that was written by like, you know, like a children's book author. Yeah. You know, the Were very you? mean CEO. <laughs> and like, he just chooses all the paths that are only for profit. Yeah. Were you surprised when this news broke? Because what I was hearing, what they said would wall street's opinion on it was that wall street was surprised not because they thought he was a great ceo but because like you said the shareholders hadn't demanded this usually when there's a a, a ceo transfer of power like this that is this dramatic it's because their back is up against the wall the shareholders are ready to revolt they've got to do something to protect themselves and it means tonight immediately you got to go we got to get this guy out of here and what yeah. you know disney fans are saying like yeah this is long overdue but wall street is saying this is a shocking thing because if you look at the shareholders their back was not yet against the wall right for sure i think that if you if you look at the past like three six months maybe of Disney and what they've been up to, man, they've burned a lot of goodwill with a lot of people in yeah. a lot of different ways, and in and in the only kind of way if you think about it that it's like all right, we'll just bring the old guy back that everybody loved, that everybody that never, that we had good relationships with, that you know was on Jimmy Kimmel, you know, like like bring that guy back. Could you imagine Bob Chappick on Jimmy Kimmel? Uh, no, oh, okay. I can't. I can't possibly imagine that being a thing that isn't a gag. You know, uh, you know what I mean. Like, honestly, if they had told me today you can have Disney Dan or Bob Chappick to talk about the Bob Chappick story, I'd go. I we'll go Disney Dan. Yeah, yeah right. I mean, yeah, he's exactly. Just not, he's just yeah. Exactly. <laughs> he's not built exactly. For this. He's just a bump on a log. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know he uh, and so I think that it's you look at. I don't mean to keep drawing this comparison, but it is a religion for a lot of people. And so when you see when you see a change in leadership like that, that skews more to, I mean, Iger was not without criticism. Iger was, you know, criticized for lots of decisions he made, none of which I'm going to pretend to pull out of a hat, but he wasn't like this ideal CEO. He had his problems. And, uh, but, but we're not, we're not really remembering those when brought up against, Chappick and all of the bad will he's mustered recently. Yeah. And so people are like, like, oh yeah, the guy who, you know, announced three cruise ships, you know, the guy who, <laughs> you know, announced Galaxy's <laughs> Edge, the, the guy, guy, you know, like, like the, the guy, guy who like did all these things, things that, that like, were only because, because hindsight, hindsight, we all have such incredible hindsight bias. bias. Mm -hmm. All we, we can, can remember are the things that like essentially confirm 
whatever, whatever our, our own core, core beliefs are, are you know? know? And, and so, so if you believe that chap is the, the, the enemy, you will idealize the person before, you know? And, like, they're all children. So many of these people celebrating are you know, 20, 30 year olds, you know, that are just like, you know, they, they've only known two Disney CEOs, you know? Right. So for you, this goes back further than Bob Iger. Well, only because I've been researching the parks for five years and I've, you know, for me, someone like me, but like, it's, it's like, uh, it, CEOs come and go, you know, <laughs> do you have a favorite Disney CEO? Is it Iger? Or do no, you not, do I don't, you not I don't care? have a, I don't care, right? It's like having a favorite president. What's the point? Right, right. Well, is is that your thing? <laughs> you need to do other things, then, I think. <laughs> you know, the fun stuff is good, but I just want to have a boss I love. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a weird it's it's a it's a weird dynamic uh, that that happens so much. Yeah. But you're right. But you know, it's interesting because I feel like like he's. Ch Chappick was getting undue credit for how well the theme parks were doing because whoever was in charge of the theme again, parks would have again, said to start. That's but the thing. A double this, undue credit. Right. So he's getting undue credit for the, the, the theme parks because he didn't do that. You know, George Lucas did. But he's also, it's not like it's his fault. I mean, maybe it is because he hasn't, it hasn't evolved very much, but you can see Marvel starting to dip. And it's, not like it's his fault that they've been doing the same thing for 15 years right. and wondering why it doesn't just continue to feel new and fresh. Right. And we, we all actually, we, that's a really great example because under Iger, we had serious Star Wars fatigue. Like we got very tired of Star Wars as a general public. And that was under the helm of old Bobby Iggs, you know? So like there's a great example of something that like people criticized him for, but you know, yeah, yeah, we're, we are definitely getting Marvel fatigue, though. That's for sure. Absolutely. Uh, now Bobby Iggs got to show, uh, got to give us something else. He's got to come up with a new superhero or something because one thing he can't do is more of the same. Uh, right. Well, get ready. There's four more Avatar movies coming. I mean, there's av <laughs> yeah, <laughs> more of the same. <laughs> He's gonna have to call up Jimmy Cameron and be like, "Hey, look, yeah." Uh, I don't know if this is the thing. Although, I mean, the Avatar attractions at Disney theme parks are great. So maybe... I have a uh, great time. Yeah, maybe it'll be worth it. How do They've you feel... have got a great margarita with boba in it there. It <laughs> looks like an alien drink, and but it tastes like a margarita. I love it. <laughs> How do you feel as like a as a real, as a theme park buff that you are? I mean, I, I literally sat there earlier today and watched you rate... Jack Skellington as compared to the skeleton from Coco and how right how, how crazy is and, that and you're not costume. wrong you're not wrong Jack Skellington at Disney World under by the way under Chappic is terrible he did a terrible job casting Jack Skellington and I'm glad he's removed from CEO if for no reason other than that but as a guy who's been going to these theme parks and and making it a, such a huge part of your life for as long as you have I loved the old system of of fast pass where if you knew what you were doing it felt like if you knew how to do the work you were rewarded if you knew a month in advance i'm gonna get on there i'm gonna fast pass it i know if i do this this and this schedule my lunch for this time then while i'm at lunch i'm gonna be able to cash in another one while i'm waiting in this line since i've used this one i can do another one like if you planned your trip properly Oh, you could make it smooth. And post-pandemic, under ChapStick, we were sitting there with this weird lightning lane thing where you had to fork out another 70 bucks or whatever every single morning. You had to, the app never really worked properly. It, I mean, yeah. it was it sucked. It was it yeah. was a it was a terrible version. And it was also one of those things where it was like, so this thing that exists right now, this fast pass system. I can explain it to you in three steps. What if we replaced those three steps, made it cost more, and also it was now 12 steps? And you're like, I what? And then I have to do this? And then I have to, do, why are you making me jump through hoops just to go on a roller coaster? Yeah, absolutely. I, that is 1,000% um, what happened. 1,000% what happened. Where uh, 
we, we went from something that was really beloved to something that really took advantage of the revenge travel. It's like, well, people are coming. People are coming. We don't need to give them <laughs> anything. Yo, you're people are coming. Yes. People are coming. We don't need to. What do you mean perks? You know, like, and, and you're the, lucky, the, the, you're lucky the to value, be here. Right. Exactly. You're lucky to be here. C- congrats. Yeah. You know, you're lucky. We just dropped the mask thing. There you go. Does that make you happy? <laughs> you know, like, but because people were just pouring into the parks yeah. and, and, and Disney is still releasing their seasonal merch and doing all the, you know, they're, they're just, they're still rolling forward. Nothing's really stopping them, you know, like, and they're, they're just chugging along and people don't need to be incentivized. I mean, you were just there. The park was, there is no slow season right now. No, like, there I was, is no, I mean, I there went, is no, dude, I come went now. I went during the slow season. I went during August. It was burning hot. It was like, it was the time that the Florida kids were starting to go back to school. It was the old slow season. And it yeah. was anything but, I mean, it was like, yeah. you know, People trying to get out of back a, in there. People try, need it. It's like their fix. Yeah. It's the thing they look forward to. It's the thing that gives them motivation to, to, to chug along so they can get to the next time that they get to go back to their favorite little bit of escapism, their favorite little bit of like, because when they're in there, the parks inherently, especially before cell phones, were are true escapism. Like you walk through the gates and like there are no TVs showing you news. There's no like there's no like I mean like you know people aren't talking about politics. Like we're all united under one glorious mouse, you know, and like and the outside world doesn't exist. You can't even see it. Yes. Like that's the whole thing. Like once you're inside, once you're on stage, and so you know, it's it's a really special place for a lot of people. And I and I love love walking around the parks one of my favorite games is playing do you know why you're here you know and i love watching people like just like uh, lose themselves in the experience and and have have very little awareness that what they're doing is like like you know they're they're like a, like a mental health retreat you, you know like it's it's amazing it's amazing to watch people are really tied to it and so when the parks were closed people wept and when the parks reopened, people celebrated. And we have had a line out the door ever since. Yeah, but, ever since. But it's like, why would you not? I mean, I guess because you're just thinking bottom line. But why would you not be like, yeah, let's make this a celebration as opposed to, well, if they're coming in with all that goodwill, we can suck a lot of it out of them and they'll still have some. So we should be okay. Right. Well, you got to make sure your numbers look good every quarter. That's why. That's it. I mean, like, I hate. I it's become a game of nickel and diming. You know, it's like what it is. when you chase endless quarterly gains, when you're always looking to be one step ahead, and there's no other goal except that, because that's all corporate America is now. Like what? Like we're watching things get peeled away, sacrificed. You know, and it's going to take some great big thing to knock it off its pedestal. For us all to be like, oh, well, you know, now g- trick us into coming back. Give us something to come back. You know, make it worth our while to come back. And then, so that once people, bur- people will burn out because people are going hard and heavy. It, it's, it's already happening. I'm already seeing it. So when people burn out, uh, you know, Disney will have to be like, okay. Because they've got nothing really exciting on the horizon. A coaster or two, you know, like... Universal's building a whole new park, bro. Ooh. It's crazy. Yeah, and but it, I mean that same philosophy applies to the other half of Disney's business, which is in streaming, where every quarter it's like, yeah, but what's subscriber growth? Subscriber growth? What's subscriber growth? Did you grow subscribers? What's subscriber growth? Did you grow subscribers? And it's like, well, I mean, yep. we've got all these great plans. Well, we got these shows coming. Uh, 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 subscriber growth. Subscriber growth. Subscriber growth. And right. And you are in this spot where it's like there's at some point you can't keep that up. It's impossible. Netflix found that out. You can't every single quarter, year yeah. after year after year after year, just have increased subscribers, increased subscribers. And it seemed like it seemed like Bob Chapik was so obsessed with that that he was making these weird decisions, like what I was saying earlier about him keeping Pixar on Disney Plus, or even yeah, the story that like guy. it made the whole company look like a like so stupid when they were like we're gonna put the Black Widow movie on Disney Plus, and 
Yeah. Scarlett Johansson was like, yeah. "Yeah, I mean, you're gonna owe me a lot of money if you did that." And then, yeah, and like, like what HBO Max did, like movie in the theater, like for a week, and then comes on the platform. Even like that would have been gangbusters for Disney Plus, and t- would have generated just as much buzz and interest. It's you know, but like we sacrificed so much. The fa- the fact that like we devalued Pixar to val to make Disney Plus look more valuable, like Pixar. <laughs> you know like that brand that is of the brand of brands like Dude, every generation from boomers to gen z they know that brand surprisingly you people know? would like, say oh that's that movie that's a pixar you wouldn't say that's right. an animated movie you wouldn't that's a cartoon oh is that right. a pixar yeah, yeah, it's practically like a google yeah yeah, yeah yeah is that like a pixar movie yeah 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 is it pixar style you know it's like kleenex you know it's like it's become like a standard yeah you know it's a cultural touchstone and now it's now, now we can't watch any of the movies that come out in the theaters, you know? Yeah. Was there was there a moment that you were like, as a fan, that you were like, oh, my God, this guy stinks. <laughs> like, this, you know, not, I'm sure, you know. Oh, yeah, plenty of moments. If you yeah. watch my, if fans of my channel will see many, many Chappic jokes uh, <laughs> littered uh, liberally throughout every episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I poke fun of them a lot. What was the thing, like, what was one of the early things that you were like, oh, this is going to be one of those CEOs that we mock a lot. <laughs> Just um, the his, if you watch him speak, if you watch his general <laughs> demeanor, you know he he's like that. He's like that. W- everybody's got like one relative that just, you just don't want to hang out with, you know, and he's got that energy, you know, he's like an energy vampire in a lot of ways, you know, like just listening to him talk, you're just like, Oh God, Bob, what are you saying? You know, like, so yeah, like, I don't know from the minute I laid eyes on him, honestly, when he was the CEO of the parks Mm -hmm. and like, he was like wandering around, looking like a buff, Mr. Clean Mm -hmm. trying to like get into the, corners of the park i don't know like he was always he always gave me the willies you know he always gave me the willies a little bit so like that dude would not be hanging out at this park if it was not his job and if he was he'd be arrested right 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 (laughs) this guy looks like he should be like a ceo of (laughs) chick-fil-a yeah you know what i mean yes this guy this guy looks like he should be running a home depot yeah uh division or something you know what i mean like he's got he's got like he's got like he's stoic masculine grump energy yes well, what do you think and of... Uh, uh, that's the, not for Disney. No, dis- stoic, masculine grump? No. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Not no Disney. one wants a grumpy Santa at the mall in no, November. No. You know, when they're going to get pictures. I you mean, want a happy Santa. He looks like the type of guy that would try to shove you for having a Mickey Mouse snow globe on your bookshelf. And you've got a Mickey Mouse snow globe on your bookshelf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does look like he watched too many sports for being the holding the position. Well, I mean, I guess it, he does run ESPN, so I can't give <laughs> him true. sports. He's allowed to know what sports are, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We forget that sometimes. <laughs> Disney is <laughs> Disney is a spanning, spanning company. Uh, yeah. Well, what do you think of the of, of the idea that so Bob Iger is back in, uh, but he's only back for two years, they're saying. They're saying yeah. that the deal is that he's back for two years. And the board is saying, please, like this is one of your main responsibilities, is to spend these two years finding somebody who is not that guy. And and yes. and kind of, yes. uh, it feels like they want him to craft somebody new in his image. Yeah, ex- well, that, I think that's ex- actually exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, they fired the guy who did the voice of Kermit. Mm-hmm. A while ago, a couple of years ago, remember when that happened? I guess so. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you've seen the guy who does the voice of Kermit, but he kind of looks like you know a guy who lives in the woods and like has a lot of tapestries and tie dyes and stuff. He's not exactly like one of the front facing, like polished, like George Clooney esque types. Sure. So when they recast Kermit, they put this guy named Matt Vogel, who practically runs Sesame Street, who mm-hmm. is Big Bird. Uh, into this position, and he is this well-spoken, you know, like, got glasses and a nice little haircut, and he just, he knows how to, like, stand in front of a crowd and talk to people, and people are like, yeah, man, you're you're cool, I, I, yeah, 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 and it, it just, Tappet just, 
I don't know why on earth anyone thought he was going to be. I just feel like maybe just corporately was like, well, he's look how good he did, and then look how good he did again, and then look how good he did again, and all these things just kind of lined up for him, yeah. and like it just looked good. He's like, well, yeah, I guess he's going to be CEO. He's the guy who got us 14% increases over the past year. Like, why wouldn't he be? You know, uh, and, but I, I, don't, I don't know. I, um, I really look forward to seeing what Bob Iger does. I looked forward to seeing yeah, I, what, what he undoes, what he restores, what he leaves alone. Because he's going to leave a lot alone. I don't think people realize that. Bet, yeah. <laughs> he's going to leave a lot cut. People are going to be like, all right, Bob, go, go ahead. Give everyone, do all the things again. He's like, uh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe we'll bring the buses back. You know, like <laughs> look if they bring the buses back, I'll be happy. I'm like, this right, is why right, this is right, my right, guy. Right, right, right. Magic Express yeah. is finally back. Yeah, but just, it, you, I don't think Chappick is just that personable. We need someone more. We need someone, someone like, like you, you said, said in Iger's like image. image. We need to, you know, and we've, we've got, got Josh tomorrow, who's a very handsome man, <laughs> currently in the same position that Bob Chappie was in when he was the CEO of the Parks Division. And I don't know, have you have you looked at this Josh tomorrow guy? No, I want to see though. Is he, is he that handsome? Do, do a Google. He's very handsome. I met him at D23. The first thing I said to him was like, "Hey, thanks for bringing handsome back to this company." Is that what and he just said? looked at me? <laughs> oh yeah this guy's handsome me, he's like, yeah this guy's real handsome thanks yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then i took a selfie with him yeah he's a really good looking guy and he's he's got a good smile and you trust him when he when he speaks confidently because that's the thing about this position you speak confidently about a lot of stuff disney loves to over promise and under deliver it's unlike <laughs> uh, it's unlike any other company it's like they they come out guns blazing uh -huh. they're like we're building this and it's going to have this and there's going to be a two story garden that you're going to be able to watch the fireworks from and moana's going to have rocks full of water and mary poppins is going to have a ride it's going to be crazy guys you know and then like and there's still a hole in the middle of Epcot, you know, you know, you know like, what, 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 so Disney just loves to just go pew, pew, pew. Cause they got, they got to look good. The right. stocks have got to keep going up and we forgive the, no one, the, the stocks, stocks don't get, get reflected, reflected on if they, they deliver or not. Mm -hmm. They just get, they just get graded on if they hype everyone up enough when it comes time to hype people up. So Disney's great at that. And Chappie, Chappie's not, he's just like, you know, one wants a sad grandpa no. coming out and telling everyone we're building a new Tiana roller, uh, you know, t Tiana ride. Yeah, we don't believe you, dude. We don't believe yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. From no, you're <laughs> no, you're not. Yeah, Bob, I don't think that you're going to be building anything Tiana based. You know, like <laughs> you don't even know so, what that is, dude. Yeah. Do you even know what a frog looks like, Bob? <laughs> uh <laughs> yeah, I. I mean, so how would he do? You know, D twenty three is the big fan expo uh, that they have, and this is where the not only. This is one. This is the one for the hardcore fans. This is like their almost San Diego Comic Con at this point. It keeps growing and growing and growing. But generally, the CEO would come out and address the top tier hardcore of the hardcore Disney fans. Yeah. How would Chappy Chapsman do at D twenty three? So this past D twenty three, he only made one appearance, mm. just for the legacy panel, just to induct mm. all of the famous people. In. And oh. when he came out, he was booed aggressively by the crowd. <laughs> and so, like, got the old Roger Goodell treatment. Out. He did not. Yeah, he he was like, "All right, peace, guys. I'm out of here. I'm out of McDowdy." You know. So he, uh, yeah, he he got booed. He got booed hard. Very People aggressively. Do not like him. Yeah. People do not like him. I think it's so. I think it's a little <laughs> immature. The dancing in the streets. Yeah. Like you know, like he's he's still a human, and like you, you got you all you know. It's like for the first stone, you know what I mean? I guess you're but all, I do. You're I, all merchandising whores. Like what? Like like? Oh no, he was such a bad guy. Look at all these popcorn buckets I bought when he was in charge. You know, <laughs> it's like pick a lane a little bit, a little bit. You know, like no, that's true. I mean, if you're gonna start, yeah, I I, I wish you wouldn't start in question, questioning the integrity because the, the questions do come up. But yeah, I also. <laughs> and maybe this says more about me than anything else. I just love the energy behind a guy who lives his life as one of the top corporate CEOs in the world and has the everybody, world. I mean, he's feared. Everybody is at his beck and call, except when he goes in front of a crowd and everybody is just free to just boo him to eternity. I love when that happens because there's nothing up until this point in Bob Chapek's life, like he's able to avoid any disagreements everywhere he goes, except 
when he's standing in front of his audience and then they destroy him. Yeah. You know, and he's got a degree in microbiology. Oh, come on. He's got a bachelor's degree in microbiology. Figure that out, Sam. I mean, come on. Who wants that? Who needs a, Who wants a microbiologist in charge of Disney? No one. Zero. Nobody. Zero people want that. Nobody. And then, right. I love he got booed <laughs> aggressively at D23. Let's go to the Disney conference so we can boo the CEO. Is the most awesome thing I've ever heard. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, they, they did not show his face much. And what's so funny is I just got my my new D23 magazine in the mail because if you remember every every three months they send you like this beautiful magazine it's in a box Ooh, in in a plastic sleeve first page opens up and it's a picture of bob chapik and mickey mouse Aww. it's like a hundred years <laughs> <laughs> uh, nobody wants i can't that. wait to uh. see what the first page is of the next issue is going to be <laughs> <laughs> just mickey mouse murdering bob chapik yeah yeah uh. yeah like ca- like kathleen like kathy griffin with yeah Trump's with head. Donald Trump's <laughs> head, yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would love it if they did that. Yeah, I was reading this uh, this article about the relationship between the two Bobs, and it, it kind of goes back to what you were saying about one just being so much more charming than the other. Because you were saying that uh, uh, Bob Iger had like a big party, and uh, he did invite invite you know Chapek, but this was after they had had their falling out. And in the article, it said that a lot of people that were there found it to be a very awkward experience because it was like, you know, a rich CEO guy's party and he had like two very long tables and that's where everybody was sitting and giving speeches and stuff like that. They said that Chapik was sat way at, 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 at a different table on the other side than, than, than Bob Iger. So they weren't even at the same table. And they said that Chapik was surrounded at the table by like his like corporate guys like his yes men the people that he brought in to be in certain positions and bob Iger was like hanging out with steven spielberg and it's like that's it isn't it like one guy's got his yes men from the office and the other guy's yeah. hanging out with steven yeah yeah spielberg. yeah act that's so right yeah bob chapik is a lot like gabe from the office you know <laughs> he's just he's <laughs> yeah yeah and 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 bob Iger is how Michael sees Ryan. Right. Yeah. Oh, exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. But Bob I, no, well, Bob Iger's the gym. Everyone likes him. Right. Even if he makes mistakes, even if he makes you mad, you still find a reason to still love him. Right, like he's, he's pointing out how stupid everybody else is, even though he doesn't have that much evidence that shows that he's better. It's just right. there's something, there's a regular guy quality where you're like, yeah, but I'd hang out yeah, with Jim. Yeah, he's a good old boy. Yeah, yeah, it's like he was one of the Rat Pack. Yeah. You know, it was like, it was like, he. it's like, he looks like he shook hands with Frank Sinatra, and that <laughs> makes me trust him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. apparently there was an email that was already sent out to Disney staff that uh, Bob yeah. Iger was going to start undoing uh, a lot of the corporate structure that Bob Chapek had set up. You know, a lot of the middle management uh, and, yeah, and all yeah, those levels. Yeah, he restructured levels. a lot of stuff, yeah. Yeah, so... I mean, we'll see. Are you, uh, are you as a fan, optimistic about this, or I mean, you strike me as as a, as more of a realist. Uh, are are you more? Yeah, realizing. I'm incredibly that optimistic about it. You because are. We, yeah, I don't know if um, you're familiar with like uh, Van Neistat, the YouTuber. He did a really great uh, uh, audio visual book report on the fourth turning. I don't know if you're ever familiar with this this crazy like that uh, history repeats itself in twenty year segments. Ooh. One of the interesting things I found about like at the end of every eighty years we clear the forest. There's a great there's a great destruction of things that leaves uh, new space for uh, unprecedented growth for the next twenty for the next twenty to forty years for the next two generations that are going to move through. And uh, Disney really feels like that right now. It doesn't feel exciting right now. It feels very flat. It feels like we're just like we're, we're 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 treading in water. We've got the Star Wars Hotel at twenty five percent capacity. We've got parks overcrowded, overpriced, with nothing new and unique going on. We got our major competitors like SeaWorld and Universal like opening up new 
new ex- and Legoland opening up new experiences and new things around our central hub of tourism. We've got animatronics not working. We've got rides in weird shapes. We got upset cat. Like it's just it. Things aren't good. The only place to kind of go now is up with like explosive growth. Like let's just let's just start innovating. Let's just start making new stuff. Let's start. Let's let's get the park. Let's get the fans back on our side. Because it's the only place for them to go. They're already not with us right now, you know? How long do you think Bob Iger's honeymoon period lasts? The whole two years. The whole He's two got years. the whole two years. Yeah. Oh, nice. yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Again, this is a religion. So we've we've tied too much of our own personal worth <laughs> in how this company d- works and, and how it does. You know what I mean? Like, I know it's funny, but I mean, it's the truth. Like, yeah. w- if this company fails, it's a reflection on me. You know, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, this is my thing that I love so much. Do you know how many Mickey ears I have and tiny backpacks? You know how many bracelets I've got and pressed pennies and how many times I've been here and how many times I've hugged Mickey Mouse? And I don't want some grump in charge, you know? Like, I need, I need, I need to be excited about this, you know? Pressed pennies. <laughs> yeah, pressed pennies, bro. <laughs> You do have a lot of press pennies, don't you? <laughs> trying to see. Look, I think I have some right here. Let's see. Is this one full? Yeah, look oh at this, my Sam. God. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if the other one's full. I've got two kids, Your Honor. Oh, that rules. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, there's even some pressed quarters over here, hey. Sam. Look, I'm a baller. Ooh. Pressing quarters. My goodness. Yeah. Wow. Well, uh, I'm happy for you, man. I'm happy that this is... Uh... <laughs> yeah, I think that people people won't criticize the company for a minute because they're anxious to be in love with the company again. Do you think FastPass will come back in its proper form? No. no? Oh, no. Why? No, I think that you'll see tweaking to Genie Plus. I'm sure that you will inevitably see Genie Plus rolled into uh, premium resorts, deluxe resorts, mm. maybe mid tent level resort. I'm sure you'll start to see things like, you know, like Genie Plus will become the new dining plan. Like, yeah, look at all you, you gluttonous effers. You're going to come here and eat anyway. So forget dining plan. We've got you there now. Loosen your belts. Get your giant can of Coke Zero. You know what I mean? Like it's like <laughs> live your live your best life. Uh, now it's like, like you want to ride all the rides. You want to ride all that new stuff. stuff we're not, not particularly innovating. innovating. You want to ride on that roller coaster that does everything that all of our other roller coasters do, like go backwards and have screens and it's in the dark and you know there's space. All the cool stuff. All our other attractions already have. You know, like people want that now. They want. They want the, the thing, thing they can get a picture, picture in front of, of, the thing they can brag about, the thing right. they can say they, they have and did. So they're moving, you know, they're really focusing on that. But who knows what we'll see. But we'll see we'll see value come back into the parks and, and bleed out of the parks and come back and bleed out. It's 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 like the GDP, you know, it's it's up and down <laughs> without anyone's real efforts that just just respond to Mother Nature. I love it. Well, where can people find you, uh, Disney Dan, uh, if they want to uh, See more Everywhere. more of your stuff. I'm on YouTube primarily. You can find me at Disney Dan. The Disney Dan.com has links to all the places. I'm on Twitch, Captain Dan Submarine Canteen, <laughs> as well as TikTok, Instagram, all the uh, all the things. And our vlog, please stop vlogging. <laughs> which is the name, but also a beg. Uh, we're begging you, please stop. <laughs> Just stop. All of you, please stop vlogging. It's not worth it. <laughs> yeah, well, check it out if you're into a... Uh, Disney stuff. Dan's take on all this stuff is all very funny and and very fun. And I and my producer, yeah, and my editor is like old wrestling, you know, like like everyone knows him in wrestling. Kenny, the legend. Yeah, yeah, you know, he's the done legendary some, documentarian. He's done some unbelievable stuff in the world he of wrestling. Really, really, really great stuff. So and uh, now I've got him. Yeah, and we're just making fun of theme parks. <laughs> yeah. Actually, what a great transition, you know? Yeah. Yeah, Did you know that they, WCW wrestled regularly at MGM Studios in Florida? Do I know? Of course. MGM St- Disney MGM Studios is the site where they held the press conference to announce that Hulk Hogan had done the unthinkable and signed with WCW. I mean, I still, Yeah, they held a parade for him, bro. Dude, I remember as a kid, 1994, sitting there watching WCW on the Superstation TBS and seeing... That red and yellow convertible 
driving down the old school Hollywood of Disney MGM and the ticker yeah. tape was falling everywhere. And I said, everywhere. no, it couldn't be. And you know what? The, <laughs> at the, I was a WWE guy. I was very upset about it. I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't thrilled. But you know, when they did their TV uh, at Disney MGM, first of all, it's hilarious because it was a theme park attraction for all intents yeah. and purposes. It's not like wrestling fans were buying tickets to the theme park. No. So it was like, the Tonight Show with Jay Leno, like they had a sign that said cheer and boo for the good oh guys and the bad guys. <laughs> that you could see from home? No, no, oh, I didn't okay. find this out until later. But I wish you could, that'd be so great if you could see it from home. <laughs> the self-awareness of that, it's that so they would have needed to have. Beautiful, But it's also, <laughs> it's the only wrestling show I've seen, and I don't know if it's because they felt like it was Disney and they needed to add to it, where the ring was put on a spinning platform which would stop when the match took place. But like during the entrances, the ring would actually like spin. It That's would rotate cool. as it would go. And you're like, I I don't know what purpose this serves, but mm. it's a cool thing, I guess. Do you think that there were specific like auxiliary weapon restrictions for matches at Disney? I'm, That's what I want to know. I'm sure like, they couldn't do anything. I'll bet they- I'm sure, I, It's I, like, I, sure, you can hit each other with chairs, but don't wrap the chairs in barbed wire. First. You can, but they have to have mouse ears on the chairs if you're going <laughs> to hit your opponent with them. It's just that's where. Yeah, we, uh, I love I love wrestling and how closely it's tied to theme parks. It's it's like a fascinating like like little magic my, sauce. My, there's nothing I like better than to make fun of people who are obsessed with theme parks and then step away for a second to obsess about wrestling as if <laughs> it's not the exact right. Like, like right right right. <laughs> the irony yeah, is right everybody there. has their thing. Everybody has a thing that they love that go pretend and have good fun, fun times. And you know what I mean? Nothing makes me happier than seeing people who are just okay with that. Like this is, I, this is the thing in my life that makes me happy. And I figured out how to continue to do it as an adult. And now that, yeah, now that Bob Chapek is gone, who was, he was trying to rob us of this, Dan, he was yeah, trying to was. make it so that we as adults could, he was trying to take the magic out. He said, right. the magic has been a part of Disney for long enough. Let's get the magic out. And let's just get the vacuum cleaner hose and suck every dollar we can out of these jamokes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now yeah, he's gone yeah. and, and magical Bob Iger is back to charm us all into mm -hmm. now we're we're willingly giving up all yeah. our money to him. He doesn't yeah, have yeah, to yeah, shake exactly. it out. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we're happy to feed the Iger all of our nickels and dimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like a little piggy bank. He's just here you go, buddy. Here. I earned it, but you're you want gonna... two dimes? Yeah, you it's want like four uh, nickels? It's like what okay. he says in Wolf of Wall Street. I think you'll spend it better than me anyway. You can have it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for making yeah. the time, man. I really appreciate Sam. it and shedding some light so on all fun. this. I love your neon sign. It's so fancy. Yeah, it's super fancy. Is it real neon or is it like that really nice LED stuff? I mean, I don't think it's real neon, if that's what you're <laughs> I'm not 100% sure what it is, but I know what I paid for it. And economically, I don't see how it could possibly yeah, yeah. be real. Yeah, that neon. would have been sustainable for the people that made it. Well, yeah, absolutely yeah, I not. It. I no, get it. No, <laughs> I don't think so. It was a pleasure, Sam. Yeah. Thanks for having me on, man. We'll have to do it again. Well, maybe in two years when there's a new CEO, we'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, dude.